Okay, let's act like you're going to create a brand new map from scratch. I'm going to show you what you do. You go to File, and then you go to New. And here, whenever you're presented with this window, this is where you choose your map's name and the height map resolution in the meters. Now, so the level name is what you can name it anything. Generally, you'll put like a TDM, a CTF, or dual before it. That's mostly just an organization thing, so whenever you're looking at the folders, uh, they're grouped together, so it doesn't get as confusing. So keep in mind that if I name this TDM, a new level that whenever I create this map it's going to put a long string of numbers and the string of numbers is actually an extended version of your Steam ID and it's to make sure that your level is unique and it can't be overridden by any other players. So generally whenever we're putting the height map resolution we generally keep it at 1024, 512. We experience problems when going below that even if you're not going to use terrain in your map I generally just recommend leaving it at 1024 by 1024 because we don't really use any texture if you're not using any texture terrains especially you're not going to hit, really see a size hit so much on that and especially if you're just rendering it out you don't have to really worry about that. So another thing to note is because there's going to be a long string of numbers attached to this name, it's also going to create a folder in objects with that exact same name. Now if you're going to make new textures, new models, anything that you want to include that's a physical file and you want that included with your map whenever it gets uploaded, you need to make sure it goes into that folder. So once, ever, once I press OK, and then that's when the map's created, in the objects directory you'll now see that map name there. The next screen is this map options and you can come back to this menu at any time. What this actually is doing is letting you set the map name and description that's displayed whenever the level is loading. So this is whenever you're sitting on the loading screen, you have a chance to put out like a little message, shout out. Uh, I recommend putting some lore behind your map because it's always nice to kind of have some sort of story of going what's going on with the level. So if we just choose a map name, derp, description, potato, why not? This sets your map type, so you got TDM, CTF, or dual. So what this will do is you're literally setting the rule set so the game knows how to initiate this level whenever it's loaded. Since I'm going to do a team deathmatch map, I want to set that TDM. Music theme, it lets you choose what song you want playing in the background of the level. And this, we named them based off the map, so if you play another map and you like the song that it's playing, uh, you just choose that map name. Currently, we don't let you choose a, um, a, a custom song there you go after a few seconds you have your very first map created okay before we really get in depth with this let's go ahead and go over the rules of creating levels for Nexus first rule is there is no swimming we don't support it we don't even support like if you go in the water you won't see nothing you'll just drop right through it so even though CryEngine has this really beautiful ocean don't let players get into it if you ever want players jumping in the ocean that's fine just make sure they're on the ground and I would not recommend doing something so if they get to the point where their heads underneath the water maybe then you kill them as like a drowning thing or something like that another thing also there's no touch bending on vegetation it's a big feature grind in 3 we removed it for performance gains um, we don't really have support for physics objects you might be able to play around with them but it's not anything we really support or, or get into too much we try to stay away from that just for more performance gains than the engine there's also we don't recommend using elevators at all because of prediction issues and lag, lag issues that's probably going to come from it uh, jump pads and teleporters have been optimized for better use another thing you want to do is try to stay away from animated objects that can be interacted with an example of that is the big wheel intention that's a very good example because if you notice on clients certain clients the physics object that surrounds that wheel doesn't exactly match around the whenever it's replicated across the server so keep that in mind whenever you're making an animated object do you really need players to interact with that because there's going to be some discrepancies between the clients some of our sets is we try to stay under a million polygons and for and the very high config spec which is ultra and then under 500,000 for medium which is low spec 
At all times, we always try to stay under 2,000 draw print calls. That's a very big note for us. That's a good set. You want to stay underneath that. You can definitely go overboard. A lot of video cards can handle a lot more, but always try to keep in mind the low-end machines that try to come in and play this game. Don't get too obsessed with people that just have terrible machines. Uh, you don't want to limit yourself creatively all the way for those people. I know it's a bummer, and we wish we can help them all, but at the end of the day, like technology's advanced so far, and uh, you know we love to use that stuff. Also, try to stay under 85 dynamic lights per scene. That's the deferred lights, and uh, sometimes it can get tricky if you have big open areas and a bunch of lights lying around. Uh, Vigor, for example, has a lot of lights in the scene. Um, and the bigger rule is generally just try to keep those numbers down as much as possible, like five per scene is a great number. Other numbers to remember is the player's two units high, that's actually two meters high, so they're about six point six feet tall, so pretty tall players, and that's because at one point we scaled up the players. Also the cameras at the player's eyes, so other FPSs, almost every single other FPS on the planet, the cameras are at the player's chest, like almost at the midpoint. That's why in other games, like in uh, uh, other arena FPSs, you may seem like you're going faster, but in Nexus you actually are going a lot faster than those games. The camera's just higher off the ground, so it doesn't seem like it, but you can easily tell just by looking at a player as they move by. At the end of this I'm going to do a little CVAR flow graph example for you. You must stay around and do that. Like, Make sure you do that and make sure you learn it or your map's not going to work right. Of course what I'm going to explain in this video and here going forward, it's very basic. I'm skipping a lot of stuff and I'm just trying to get you up to a point to where you'll have a general understanding and you can start to do a little bit of stuff on your own. There's definitely a lot more going on, especially on the wiki, and we have our wiki, it's detailed out, but definitely more detailed in the CryEngine 3 Free SDK. Most of the stuff there applies directly back to Nexus, so a lot of times throughout the wiki you'll see us pointing to the Free SDK for more information.